Good morning, Grade Five. Welcome back to Grade Five Mathematics class. How are you all doing today? Let's learn the next method of data representation today. That's called tally marks. Tally charts that use tally marks to represent data. So the number of time a data item occurs is called its frequency. So in a tally chart, the frequency of a data item is shown using lines like these and these lines are called tally marks in a tally chart data items are counted as groups of 5 so tally chart is a way of counting objects in groups of 5 using tally marks so in a tally chart the first four counts or the first four tally marks are represented with vertical lines like this or vertical tally marks and the fifth count or the fifth line is always represented with a diagonal like this or this either way is okay so the first four tally marks are represented as vertical lines and the fifth line is a diagonal line across the four tally marks and keep in mind that each tally mark corresponds to a count of 1 Now let's see a table that shows the representation of tally marks corresponding to different frequencies. So the first one, when the number of objects is one, you can represent that with one vertical line or one tally mark. Now when the number of objects is two, you can represent that by two vertical lines. When it is three, it is represented using three vertical lines. When it is four, that is shown with four vertical lines. And when it is five, first four vertical lines are drawn. Then the fifth line is drawn as a diagonal line across the four tally marks. So after a count of five, the process repeats. Like when the count is six, or when the frequency is six, first you'll show the tally marks that corresponds to five. That is four vertical lines and then a diagonal line. That group represents a count of five. And then one vertical line, so it is five plus one six. Now the frequency is seven. So first you draw tally marks corresponding to five. That is four vertical lines and a diagonal line across the four lines. This corresponds to five. Then two vertical lines, so it is five plus two seven, and then so on. Hope this is clear to you now. Now we will see some examples from your textbook. The first question: Rahul's mother made a list of items. To be bought for Rahul's birthday party, represent the following data using tally marks. So here in this question, you are asked to represent the given data using tally marks in a tally chart. So what is the data given here? Rahul's mother made a list of items to be bought for his birthday party. So you have the name of the items and the number of each items to be bought. So you need to buy twelve birthday caps. Fifteen pastry, twenty samosa, thirty chocolates, and twenty-five candies. Now, how do you represent this data in a tally chart using tally marks? The first step is to draw a table like this. So you have the labels, items, and tally marks. And the first item is birthday cap. How many birthday caps need to be bought? Twelve. Now, how do you represent twelve using tally marks? Let's see how. So let's start drawing the tally marks. So the total count is twelve. So first, let's draw one, two, three, four. Now the fifth line like this. Now this is equal to a count of five. Now what is remaining? The total is twelve. We drew five lines corresponding to five caps. Now seven caps have to be represented. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. Another five here. So it is five plus five, ten caps. Then One two, so five plus five ten plus two, twelve. Birthday cap twelve. So this tally marks twelve lines have to be drawn like this to represent twelve birthday caps. Now the next one pastry, fifteen pastries have to be represented here. So that would be we represent that in groups of five. So this is five. This is another five. This is another five. So five plus five plus five, fifteen. And the next one, samosa. Samosa, you need twenty numbers. So how do we represent that here? One five. Now it has become ten. 
Now it is 15. Now it is 20. 20 divided by 5 it is 4. You have 4 groups of 5 each. So similarly you can draw tally marks for chocolate and candy as well and your final tally chart will look like this. Hope this is clear to you. Now we will see one more example. This is also from your textbook. In a class, John collected information from all the students about their favorite place for an outing. He recorded them as tally marks. Answer the following questions based on the given data. So what is mentioned in the question? You are given a tally chart prepared by John and this is about the favorite place for an outing. So you have the labels for favorite place and the tally marks corresponding to each place. So let's have a look at the questions that is following. The first question is which is the most favorite place for an outing among the students. So that will be the place having the most tally marks right. So which is the place having the most tally marks see the amusement park and what is the total tally marks here 5 plus 5 plus 5 15 plus 4 19. So the most favorite place for an outing among students is amusement park. Now the next question, how many students like to go to an amusement park? We have already found out the number 5 plus 5 plus 5, 15 plus 4, 19. Now the next one, how many students prefer to go to the beach? So the number will be equal to the tally marks here. So 5 plus 5, this group corresponds to 5, right? So 5 plus 5, 10 plus 2, 12. So 12 students prefer to go to the beach. Now the next one, find the total number of students in the class. How do we find that? We have to add that we have to add all the tally marks to get the total number of students. So let's find out what is the total number of students. So here the number of students who like to go to the beach is equal to 12 and here it is 15, here it is 7 and here it is 15 plus 4, 19. So let's add all these. Now 19 plus 7 is equal to 26. 26 plus 15 is equal to 41. Now 41 plus 12 is equal to 53. So the total number of students in the class is equal to 53 students. So I hope these examples are clear to you. We may go through this topic through pages 202 to 204. Then you have to do exercise 14.2 which is in page number 204 of your textbook and after the exercise you can see the heading called hearts the high order thinking skills question please go to that as well and do accordingly so children hope the concept we learned today is clear to you that's all for today we'll see in the next class with a new topic till then bye